Despite all the advances in obstetrical diagnostics and therapeutics over the past 10 years, preterm birth remains the major factor in neonatal morbidity and mortality. Reducing the risk of preterm labor and delivery right now is mostly related to the history of preterm labor for that particular patient, as well as the measurement of cervical length. Uh, while those particular uh, factors are important in predicting preterm labor and delivery, they unfortunately do not uh, relate to the vast majority of women who go on and have preterm labor and preterm delivery. I recall one patient in particular, a 32-year-old woman uh, with one child at home, and completely unremarkable delivery, uh, who I was providing care for now her second pregnancy. She had done incredibly well the first time around. Her prenatal screening was unremarkable. She had a second trimester ultrasound that showed a apparently normally developing fetus. Uh, she was almost the obstetrical patient in perfection. Um, I had seen her at about 32 weeks. Um, she had no complaints. She was doing well. And about a week later, um, she called the office and said that she didn't feel well and had some pressure. And I told her to come in immediately. And when I did her pelvic exam, she was five to six centimeters. And we were able to calm things down. We took her to the hospital soon, uh, obviously afterwards, uh, and I believe we got another two weeks and knock on wood, uh, the baby did fine, uh, delivered at about 34 and a half to 35 weeks, uh, but this was completely out of the blue and, and to this day she represents for me the uh, exemplar uh, of the patient who has no past history had an appropriate cervical length at, at, in, in uh, measurement uh, and came in out of the blue. And if there is a patient uh, for whom this test would potentially best suit, this is the patient. And literally this is the patient that we as uh, obstetricians and obstetrical providers need to identify better uh, to start bringing the preterm labor and delivery rates down. Patients come to see us not to get scared, not to be stressed, but to learn about what exactly is going on with their pregnancy and what are the things that in fact may impact the outcomes of those particular pregnancies. I think it's important for clinicians in general to discuss these risks in an appropriate setting, meaning not to overhype the risk or underhype the risk. The value of the preterm test cannot be uh, overestimated. Um, we continue to deal with the vast majority of women who eventually go into preterm labor and deliver early uh, as having absolutely no recognizable risk factors. And for those women, the onset of preterm labor and preterm delivery is not just uh, a, 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 a awful event, but it's an incredible surprise. The ability to identify from the large pool of low-risk women, those women who may in fact go on to have preterm labor and delivery, is of incredible value uh, and allows us to not only monitor these patients better, it allows us to counsel these patients better, and most importantly it allows us to develop those interventions that will in fact eventually reduce hopefully eliminate this scourge in, in, in all aspects and in all regions of the United States. The preterm test is, for me, one of the great advancements in obstetrical care. Uh, because of the continuing recognition of the morbidity and mortality associated with preterm delivery, and the unfortunate 
increasing risk of preterm labor and delivery across the United States, our ability to now recognize those women who are more likely to go through preterm labor and delivery is truly one of the great advancements, if not uh, one of the most important advancements uh, of the last several years. We finally now have something to offer women, low-risk women, uh, with no history of preterm labor and better identify them as, as to determine whether they are in fact going to potentially go through preterm labor.